This video will quickly go through setting up and using a Tutor Game Me gamification module. Game Me installs like any other module in a Tutor. Click on the Modules tab, find Install Modules, choose Game Me from the list of available modules, and click Install. Review the details for the module, click Yes to complete the install. You should receive a feedback message, something like this one up here. When successfully installed, next you want to enable Game Me. So choose the radio button, it'll be listed there as disabled. Then press the enable button. Now that the module is installed, click on the Game Me tab to open up the administrator's Game Me manager. You'll see the events tab is currently open. Down below you can see the default events that are provided with the system. You can edit any of these. We'll talk a little bit more about these in a little while. You've got the default badges. Again, you can edit any of the values by clicking on the cells and editing them directly or uploading images into the badge drop zone. Same for levels. You can upload different icons for the different levels and edit any of the values. Finally, in options, you do have one option as an administrator to allow or disallow instructors from customizing the default events, badges, and levels. But we'll leave that on so that we can demonstrate how that's done in the instructor view. Before looking at the instructor view, we'll take a quick look at what students see. Over here on the left, you'll see a side menu block. It has all the game me elements currently turned on at the top here points below that levels below that the progress to the next level the badges the user has earned and a leaderboard this can be hidden away at any time if it's taking up too much room for instance the student also has the game me panel that they can click on these are both optional items that can be turned on and off there uh, the badges are displayed the levels are displayed the various alerts that have been issued are listed and if the log is enabled the student can also scan through all of their activity while using gaming including the levels that have been issued the badges as well and all of the points and where they've been scored to turn on gaming you either need to turn on the gamey course tool or the gamey side menu so you can do that through the Course Tools Manager. Scroll down until you see Game Me. In this case, we'll select it and add it as our main navigation tab. Choose that, save. And you'll see now that the navigation tab has been added in. You can also add it in as a side menu block. So we'll scroll down, click on Side Menu. In this case, we'll replace the glossary with the Game Me module. Click on that apply and there you go the game me module is set up and ready to go to customize game me elements click on the manage tab and scroll down to the game me tool open that up if it's not open yet click on the events tab this will give you a listing of the course events that are being customized up here at the top and a full list of all of the available default events down below. So to edit these default events, you can click on the copy link and it will make a course events copy that you can customize specifically to the course. So looking at the fields, and you can click on any one of them and edit them. The description field is a short name essentially for the badge. You can set whether the event occurs, reoccurs, or whether it's a single occurrence event. Set to zero, it uh, recurs. Set to one, it's a single occurrence event. You can set the reach repetitions. So when 25 repetitions are reached in this particular case, uh, an event occurs, a reach event occurs, and a badge or bonus points are, at, are issued. You can set the maximum number of points that can be scored for this particular event. In this case, 250. You could set a, each badge. This is typically used for 
single occurrence events to issue a badge when that particular event occurs. More likely you'll set a REACH badge. So in this case we'll take a closer look at this particular badge, number 25. This is the ID of the badge that will be issued when the REACH repetitions is reached. The EACH points is the points that are issued each time this particular event occurs and the REACH points are those that are issued when the REACH event occurs. You can modify the REACH message. This is sent out when a REACH event occurs. Typically includes the badge and a message and perhaps a list of the other badges that the user has earned. And you can remove this event and it returns it to the default behavior down in the default events. If you look at badge number 25, you can see it's the lock badge, so we can change that. It's the badge that appears in the side menu currently. So that ID is the ID that appears here in the reach badge field. The alias in this case is not editable, only the administrator can do that. You can change the title and the description that goes along with the, this particular badge. So we'll change this uh, badge up to show you how that occurs. You can see on the left here there's the lock badge. So we can slip in a different file. In this case we'll add the night PNG file in as the badge. Reload the page. And you'll see that the badge is now changed to the custom badge that we created. Much the same for levels. You can change up the icons by dropping another icon into the icon drop zone and change the name and description of the icon and the points threshold, threshold at which point the level is reached. And you can remove the level if you want to revert back to the original settings. Under the options tab you can see all of the different game the elements that can be enabled and disabled. Points for instance, the first option is the points that appear at the top of the side menu block. The log we looked at earlier briefly. Levels is this section here with the stars appearing. Progress to next level can also be displayed or turned off. Position relative to others typically appears down below the leaderboard but because I'm logged in as an instructor at the moment it doesn't appear. You can enable and disable the badge badges up here right here. You can show the instructor in the leaderboard. Currently the I am the instructor and it shows up there but you'll probably want to disable that. You can enable and disable the leaderboard if you like which is this piece down at the bottom here and you can enable and disable alerts. You'll set up the leaderboard with a particular number of people listed there and you can set up the number of levels in a particular course. Finally, you can look at the progress of each of the students in the course and the instructor. In this case, I'll take a look at myself here, view, and you can see that the badges I've earned, points, stars, and where I sit in the leaderboard are all listed there. Be sure to see the game, the handbook, up in the top right corner for all the details.